What's the largest number in the world? Is it infinity? What do you think? Well, there is no such thing as largest number. Numbers they go up forever and ever. If you say infinity is the largest number, then what would be infinity times infinity? Wouldn't that be bigger than infinity? The only problem with infinity is that it isn't a precise number as such. It's a concept, an idea to represent something which cannot be written or expressed with common mathematical writings. It is beyond the realm of real and complex numbers. So what is infinity? Who invented it? What is the history of infinite? Infinite, what an incredible concept. People have wondered about the infinite ever since they were able to think about the world they lived in. Did the world come into being suddenly or had it always existed? Would it continue to exist infinitely forever? Is space infinite? If one traveled through space in a straight line, could they continue forever? Suppose one cut a piece of wood in half and then cut one of the halves again in half and continued doing so, could they continue forever? The idea of infinity is used mainly in the fields of maths and physics. It describes a quantity without end. In fact, infinity comes from the Latin word infinitas. That word means unboundedness. Infinity has its own symbol, you know it as sleeping eight. It's called the Lemnis gate, which means ribbon. John Wallis began using this symbol for infinity in 1655. Some believe he based it on the Roman numeral for thousand. Others believe the symbol was based on the last letter of the Greek alphabet, Omega. Let's take a stroll on finite history of infinite in finite period of time. The ancient Greeks were among the first people to consider the infinite. Greek philosopher Zeno of Ilia is credited for first introducing the concept of infinite. Zeno found that whenever he introduced real infinites in the world, he ran into paradoxes. Zeno was a leading spokesman for the Iliatic school of philosophers. He felt that the science could not grapple with reality unless it took into account the ways infinity seems to appear everywhere in nature. One of his paradoxes discusses a race between Achilles, the mythical runner, and a tortoise, where the tortoise is given a head start. Zeno said that it would be impossible for Achilles to ever catch up to the tortoise. He reasoned that by the time Achilles began running, the tortoise was already a distance ahead. By the time Achilles reached the point where the tortoise had been when Achilles began running, the tortoise had already moved further on. When Achilles gets to this new point, the tortoise has again moved on. This will continue forever, preventing Achilles from ever catching up. This paradox and other paradoxes of Zeno's are among the first mention of the idea of something continuing forever. Pythagoras is credited for inventing the notion of mathematics, which by the way, in Greek means that which can be learned. Pythagoras waved numbers with religious orientation. Pythagoras said that each integer had some sort of spiritual or philosophical meaning and the ratios between the integers are crucial. Like the major third 4 is to 3 in music, so the harmonic progression was for them a religious insight. Pythagoras launches the idea of the theorem and we all know the most famous Pythagoras theorem. Yes, the theorem of Pythagoras. And all of a sudden, the whole project goes for a toss when in right angle triangle with adjacent sides as 1, 1, value of the diagonal comes out as square root of 2 as per his theorem. But square root of 2 is an irrational number. To write down the digits of square root of 2 would take us infinite digits with no repeating pattern. Right in the middle of the religion of infinite breaks out the impossible. The irrationality, the religion of rationality was shot to hell. Aristotle, the father of some two dozen scientists, didn't believe in infinity as physics wouldn't work but he believed in potential infinite. He wanted to banish the concept of infinity in the name of good science. So he said, 
It's fine to have potential infinite, it just cannot be ever actual. A never ending universe or a never ending list like the list of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. No matter how long you count for, you can never reach the end of all numbers and you can't reach the end of an unending universe even if you travel in the fastest spaceship. This kind of infinity is what Aristotle called a potential infinity. It's definitely there but you will never actually meet it face to face. You just can't get to the end of those never ending lists or expanses. An amazing comprehension of infinite was done some 2400 years ago. In India, the great founder of the Jain religion, Mahavira, gave incredible speculation on the nature of infinite. As far as we know, by 400 BC, Jains had introduced a notion that hadn't been used before. The difference between which goes on without ending and the truly limitless, the truly endless. They also began to distinguish the orders of infinity. So there is infinite in length, infinite in area and infinite volume and infinite perpetually. And the last thing which we credit the Jains for is that they made distinction between enumerable, innumerable and infinite. They said that the highest enumerable number and they defined it the way Cantor defined it as Aleph or A0, the first number of the transfinite and this happened 2400 years ago. Isn't it amazing? In the first century BC, Lucretius considered the idea of infinite universe. In his poem, he argues, if the universe was finite, then there would have to be a boundary. If someone approached the boundary and threw something at it, there would be nothing to stop the object. If there was anything to stop the object, it would have to lie outside the universe and nothing can be outside the universe. Today, many scientists believe in an infinite universe without a boundary. Would you believe that there can be different sizes of infinity? It's true. Consider this. There is an infinite number of positive whole numbers. There is also infinite number of even positive whole numbers. Both these sets of numbers are infinite. However, the set of infinite positive whole number is twice as large. Without infinity, many mathematical concepts would fall apart. The famous mathematical constant pi, for example, which is essential to many formulas involving the geometry of circles, spheres and ellipses, is interestingly linked to infinity. As an irrational number, a number that can't simply be expressed by fraction, it's made up of an endless string of decimals. And if infinity didn't exist, it would mean that there is a biggest number that would be a complete no-no for mathematicians. The infinities of the singularity. Black holes may be the closest we have come to detecting infinity in the real world. In the center of a black hole, a point called a singularity is a one-dimensional dot that is thought to contain a huge mass. Physicists theorize that at this bizarre location, some of the singularity's properties are infinite, such as density and curvature. At the singularity, most of the laws of physics no longer work because these infinite quantities break many equations. For now, infinity remains in the realm of the abstract. Albert Einstein famously said, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity, and I'm not sure about the universe. The notion of infinity has been pondered by the greatest minds over the ages, from Aristotle to German mathematician Georg Cantor. To most people today, it is something that is never ending or has no limit. But if you really start to think about what that means, it might blow your mind. Is infinity just an abstract concept or can it exist in the real world? The human mind seems to have created the concept, yet can we really picture what it looks like? Perhaps to truly envision it, our minds would need to be infinite as well.